Hello friends and welcome back to Stay Tonight. In this react series we are at our 8th episode which is the video in which we will be talking about conditional rendering and how we can process lists of value in our react.js application. When I say list of values I mean you know it can be a json string with multiple values in it or it can be a simple array of objects or array of values. So how we can use you know different methods available on array uh, to you know sort of create user interfaces using all those values so we'll cover that and we will talk about conditional rendering by conditional rendering you must be thinking yeah you will talk about if else condition but i will be covering more you know shorthand formats in javascript like the ternary operator and the double hand operator which are the modern uh you know operators utilized for conditional rendering especially in react.js so let's get started. So as you can see on your screen, I have a simple app.js file, which is the app component in my React application. And I'm creating simple React.js series, simple text, heading text over here. Now talking about conditional rendering first. So let's take a quick example. So if I have this variable marks and I have some value that says 78, and I have to showcase, you know, I have a condition that I have to portray over here that if the marks secured by a student is greater than 40, then I show that, okay, the user has passed. Otherwise, I show the user has failed. Now, how I can do that? So, as we know that this is simple JavaScript, so I can use simple if-else condition over here. I can say marks greater than 40, and I can have some uh, you know, JSX code or some user interface element created over here. And I can have my else condition and I can have another UI element over here. So what I'll do is I'll pick this return statement from here. And I'll take this inside of this and inside of this. Here I can print pass and here I can print fail. So if I save it, I get pass over here because the marks are greater than 40. If I do this 22, then I'm getting fame. Now, this is a very basic example of using if else condition to create user interfaces, right? And uh, you must be thinking that, okay, yeah, this looks fine. We can use multiple return statement, but this is not very, uh, you know, a good way to implement this particular scenario. There are different, very, you know, quick and short ways of doing this, and you don't have to write all this code. So, how we can do that? So for that, we will be using ternary operator. So let's see how we can use ternary operator to convert this into less code, but still do the same thing. So what I'll do is I'll remove this. I'll have simple return statement over here. And inside this, because this is JSX and we know that in JSX, we can write JavaScript code as well. So what I'll do is I can simply write marks greater than 40. And I'll have my ternary operator and I can have my string like pass, and if it is not, then fail. If I save it, I'm still getting the same output. As you can see, fail is still over here. And if I change it to 82, I get pass. Now, the entire code that we wrote initially using the ifs condition is converted into a single line. Here I'm using ternary operator, question mark and colon. And you can also have, you know, different chaining of these tertiary operators uh, have multiple conditions. So this is a very good format when it comes to uh, having conditional rendering in React application where you want to have some UI component uh, based on, you know, some value, some boolean flag, etc. You can use this uh, question mark and colon ternary operators in the user interface. The next thing that I was talking about was array and how we can access array value. So if I create a simple array, let's say students, and I have some name of students, let's say Abhishek, let's say John, and uh, Ron, and let's say Aditya. Now if I have this students array, now one direct way to access the values inside of this array would be by using index, right? So we all know that we can use simple indexing and using indexing, we can hack access values inside an array, right? So where I'm able to access value, I can change the index and I can have all these values. I can simply have this, you know, multiple values with different indexes and I can print all of them together, right? But how I can do it using some function, because this is not the right way using indexes. It can, 
be that I can have hundreds of values. How will I show all of them? Maybe, you know, I have a list of products in which I have, let's say, a thousand products and I want to show all the list, not thousand, let's say hundred products and I want to show the list of all the products. So how will I do that, right? So what we can do is inside this return statement, uh, which is returning the UI element using GSX, we can iterate over the students uh, array using, you know, either for each or we can use the map function, right? So if you know JavaScript, you should know that in uh, JavaScript, we have higher order functions like map, for each, reduce, which can be used with values uh, available in that array. So this takes another, uh, you know, callback function in which you can get value and the key. And I'll be using arrow function style. Now, this is the way in which, you know, I can access all the values of uh, this particular student's array one by one. Now, what I've done is I've used the map function on the student's array. And inside the return, I'm using this. Now, what I'll do is I'll have to add another return over here to add the JSX elements that I want to create. We're getting an error, but I think we should not be worrying about the error. Yeah, so the error is gone. So there are a couple of things that we will be covering over here. The first thing is let's just print all the values of the array. So I can simply do this val. Up, sorry. I can do this and I get all the values. Abhishek, John, Ron, Aditya, etc. Now if you see in the console, we are seeing an error over here. It says warning each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Now this is something that React enforces. React will keep showing this error. Why this is showing it an error? Because Every time what we're doing is, now how React works is React creates a virtual dome. And every time some changes occur in that virtual dome, it will only affect the element that is being updated and it will update that particular element inside the dome object that it has created. Now, because what we're doing is we're running a loop on this array and we're creating different H1 elements. Now for React, it will become difficult to identify uniquely which H1 tag we're talking about. We might change some value. For example, if I change this over here and say, uh, let's say Jackie. Now what React had to do, React had to, you know, check all those H1 tag because it was not able to identify uniquely a single H1 tag in which the change was created, in which, you know, the value got changed. So it had to, again, re-render the entire UI. What React is suggesting over here is to have a key element and inside this provides some unique value. We can either have this value over here, right, if I remove this error and I refresh it, we're still getting an error. So a better way would be to keep the key over here. So let me just remove this. Yep. Okay. So it was giving error because of the root element. So what I can, I could have done is I could have had a div and I can have this. And because these, this particular div is also getting created for every iteration, every uh, element in the array. So what I should ideally be doing is doing this. And now, yeah. So you're not seeing any error now because uh, in this return, I'm returning a div root element, which is uniquely identified by the key. So key here would be 0, 1, 2, 3. It will keep on changing, right? So that's how you can iterate over values in an array or a list or, you know, uh, you know, if you have any JSON also, you can use, uh, convert that JSON into an array and then iterate and create your user interface. Now, this was a very basic example in which we uh, covered the basic conditional rendering and how you can iterate over a list of values. Let's go ahead and have some uh, complex example wherein we can have a, you know, more complex object with more information. We can show different information. And if some information is not available, we will use conditional rendering to skip that. So let's you know write code for that so what i'll do is i'll create a function and i so if you know javascript you should know that functions can also be used to create objects so that's what i'll be doing over here i'll create a function with some values let's say name age whether the user is living in the hostel or not if they are living in the hostel let's say hostel room and um what else we can have um, if the user or let's say city of the user. So I'm creating a function and I'll be using this function to create different objects. 
So I'll be using this keyword to let's say name is equal to n. Don't get confused by this particular syntax. If you know Java Studio, you should be knowing this. I'm creating a function in which I'm adding some properties and I'm using this function to create objects. So this dot hosteler edge. So these are nothing but just, you know, arguments that parameters that the function is taking and I'm assigning them to the different properties that I'm creating for this particular function. This dot hostel room HR the semicolons are not necessary I'm just adding them to show where the okay this is giving error because of this let's just ignore that so let's create students let's say S1 I'll do new student I'll provide the name Apishek uh, this was age, so let's say 21. Hostel, true. Hostel room, let's say 101. And city, let's say Delhi. Okay, so I have one object of this function. Let's create another student, too. Let's say John, age 20. No, not living in the hostel, zero. And let's say London. Okay, so I have, no, I have two objects now, uh, S1 and S2 using the student function. And let's create this array students and put these value inside. Now this is a bit related to, you know, uh, the condition that you might get in actual uh, scenario where you might be getting some data which is a little complex data. It can be object as well, key value pair as well. In our case, I have used a function to create these objects. You can also use classes to create these objects. There are different ways in JavaScript that you can do this, right? It can also be coming in form of a JSON array in which you will have some data, let's say a list of students on a list of products, and you have to display all of that on your user interface. So the idea over here is to how we can iterate over these values and how we can use conditional rendering to showcase some information and you know to not show some information which is not available. So in this case, as we can see, some students are not living in hostel and some students are living in hostel with they have the student room as well. While John is not living in hostel, hostel falls. So the hostel room information is just you know a placeholder information. I've added zero value to it. So when we will display the information for John over here, we will not be displaying the hostel room information. So we'll use conditional rendering over there, right? Now this stays the same. We'll still be using the map function. Let's just say S, let's take S over here, which will represent the student information. And uh, yeah, so let's start. So I'll be creating separate div or let's say separate paragraphs to have name I'll have s dot name so we're getting name Vishak name John as you can see there are two objects in our students array and the map is running twice so I'm seeing two information over here right I've created a class already which is card so if I apply the class over here it will look a little nicer yes so this is something, however, you would generally be showing. You will have some user interface, some styling, for example, list of products, list of students, or list of anything that you would display uh, in your UI, right? So what I'll do is quickly, you know, let me just add all the information. So age is fine. We have, for both the students, we have age. Now, hostler is something, you know, we have. So I cannot show it like this, right? If I say lives in hostel. And I say hostler over here. So because this is true, this is a Boolean value. So we are not seeing over here anything. So what we will do is we will be using ternary operator over here. So what I can do is s dot hostler. I can simply have this. Yes. No. Right. So now what we have over here is I've used conditional operator for conditional rendering. What we are doing is we are showing lives in hostel. Yes. Lives in hostel. No. So you can have any string over here. This is just to showcase, you know, some information that might be available in Bollier and you want to display it in a different way in your user interface. You can use ternary operator for that. Now, the second one is hostel room. Now, if someone is not living in hostel, then obviously, you know, they won't be having any hostel room. So if we show this as zero, it won't look good. So what we can do, let's see what we can do with this. 
Now, one thing would be you can easily see that okay, now it's saying hostel room zero, hostel room one zero one doesn't look cool. This zero because this is unnecessary information. We should not be showing this entirely. So what I can do over here is I can simply take this out and I'll show you another way using the and and operator. So what I can do is I can put it over here and I can say. So let me just cut this. So this is showing me the value of hostel room, right? 1010. What I can do is I can have, uh, you know, this is based on the condition whether the user is hostler or not. So if the user is hostler, then only they'll have a hostel room. So what I can do is I can have hostler over here. So this is more like, you know, if hostler is equal to true, then I showcase the uh, UI for that. Otherwise I don't, right? So I can use this and and, and I can have my entire P tag over here, yeah, and I can have my information of the hostel room over here. So as you can see over here in this particular, because the s dot hostler is giving me true, so this and and operator is working and it is showing me the next part. In case of John, this is false, so I'm not getting any hostel room information over here. Now this is another way for conditional rendering using the and and operator. And in JSX, this becomes very handy because writing if else condition over here while you are iterating over a list of values, it becomes very difficult in the code, doesn't look very user friendly or readable at all. So this, these are the things that you must learn and start using when it comes to React JS and you know writing, uh, creating user interfaces using JSX. Now what else is remaining? We have the city part. So let's quickly write that down. I think that should be easy city and it comes as city so we have both for them we have city now this is how our ui looks hostel room is available for the student abhishek because he lives in hostel john is not living in hostel so there's no information for hostel room how we did that we used ternary operator over here for adding yes or no for lives in hostel part using the boolean information that was stored while we created these objects and in the next step, we used again the hostler boolean value true or false. And based on that, we displayed a U UI component and we decided whether to display the UI component or not. So these are two very important concepts, how you can, you know, work with a list of values because you will be working with list of values. It can be JSON array, it can be normal array, it can be a list of objects. Like in this case, we had a list of objects and we had to render all of them in the user interface. It can be for an e-commerce product, you can have you know, your backend can be uh, returning back you with the list of products and you have to create the user interface for different products, right? So you can use the map function to iterate over them and create your user interface. And inside the JSX, you can use conditional rendering to show information or to not to show information. So this was all about conditional rendering and how you can access, how you can work with lists of values in ReactJS. I hope you are able to understand. Don't get confused by this map and, you know, this syntax because this is standard javascript you should learn about different high order functions that are available in case of array for each map reduce etc these are very useful and as you move on to create complex applications you'll be using them more and more so that was it for this video we covered two very important concepts in this video in the next video i'll probably come up with some good you know uh project small game or some you know simple application that we'll, we can create in react and then we we'll move on to understanding how state works in uh, react.js and how different life cycle events happen so thank you for watching this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channels so that you never miss an update regarding this react.js series i have been posting if you have not seen the videos before this one please follow the react series video from the beginning if you're a beginner you will be easily able to learn react.js watching this videos so thank you so much see you in the next video